Welcome to the part 2 of the DC1 drum computer tutorial. You might want to check the part 1 before going deeper into this tutorial. So click in this box and follow the link to watch the first part. But if you are ready, hold on tight cause there's a lot of homework to do tonight. In this part we will look at the menu parameters that are accessible by pushing the left encoder. We will also overview all the CV functions accessible by pushing the corresponding CV button. Some CV functions are related to some specific menu parameters. We will see how to get the best out of those possibilities. It's good to remember that the Saver Store feature will keep the CV functions and the parameters in its memory. A simple chart, GPIG is available on the Muff Wiggler forum. It will provide pertinent information such as stored location numbers, the list of the identified successive patterns for the song mode, and the list of the assigned percussions for the tracks of the preset patterns. Feel free to use it as a quick reference and make it your best wallpaper ever. Now let's look at those CV functions one by one. The CV inputs can receive any 0 to 5 volt signals. You can have 4 CV configurations for a sequence and you can have multiple CV control for the same track. A, B, C, D, OFF function. A, OFF will turn off any assigned CV control already set it for input A. Also 4 B, OFF ends on. Tempo. The tempo function will let the CV control the speed or tempo for the sequence. It will ignore the existing tempo setting and will operate with the incoming CV signal. Shuffle The shuffle or swing percentage will be controlled by CV signal. loop. The three loop functions are all very similar. Mastering those functions is a must since it is one of the best characteristic of the sequencer. It may be confusing at first but you will see it is very simple once getting used to it. First you'll need to store some sequence into the memory bank. Try to keep in mind that the loop functions will only play consecutive patterns. If you intend to have lots of sections in your song, remember to use the DC1 chart as a good reference for your sections. The CV loop functions are all working the same. The pattern will loop until a gate signal or CV is received. The voltage will load the next consecutive sequence. The loop 1 function will go through all the stored patterns while the loop 4 and loop 8 will only play the next consecutive 4 or 8 patterns. Hope the chart will help you getting organized in your patch. The half and fourth functions. When the input gets a high value, the sequencer plays all the intermediate steps before setting up the new length. It will loop at the first half or the first fourth of the sequence until the voltage gets below the detection point. Fill in patterns. The last eight stored patterns are the fill in patterns. Pattern 57 is fill in A, pattern 58 is fill in B and so on up to pattern 64 for fill in H. When an incoming signal is received, the chosen fill in will play automatically. The fill in will stop looping when there is no more signal at the input. Random Sequence Each rising edge on the CV input will select a random sequence among the saved ones. The sequence will start playing at the end of the current one. As long as there is a gate signal at the input, the sequencer will play a different sequence after each cycle. When there's no more signal, it will get back to the first pattern. When a pattern is loaded, you may load it with a different tempo or different settings. It may not be appropriate to have random tempo or other crazy settings, you can lock down some parameters in the menu pages to avoid chaos into your patch, but we will look at this stuff later. Density 
the input voltage is mapped into the random density around the active track in the pattern. The density of a selected track is active only when you are in play mode. Random Beats The input voltage randomizes the active track. The steps already turned on by the user in the active track are unchanged whilst the other steps are randomized. If your track has no steps in the sequence, it will randomly add some. Euclidean beat. Unfortunately, the Euclidean rhythm functions are under development. But wait. It will be ready in the next firmware update and a demo video will show more tips for your DC1 drum computer. Track 8 Length. The input voltage will change the gate length of the selected track. This could be useful if you are using the gate output directly into a VCA or to sustain an envelope. Now the gate length will affect the sustain just like magic. Mute a high level on the input mutes instantly the output of the corresponding track. This function can be useful with some LFOs for variations, or with a controller like the LS1 light strip or the LP1 light plane, you can quickly mute tracks in your performance. Role. First, it's good to know the role functions are not active when external clock is selected. The roles are quick burst of clocks at the moment of the steps. The role type is defined in the menu section. You can select up to four bursts for each role. The menu pages. Now that we learned all the CV functions, let's take a look in the menu section. Pushing down the left encoders knob will bring the menu pages. Gate length. This is the length of the gate or trigger signal for all the tracks. Each sequence has its own gate length value stored in memory. The default setting is 6 and 12 is the maximum value. Roll type. This parameter is active when you choose the role type for at least one of the tracks in the CV mode menu. Choose the number of multiple hits during a single step up to four trigs. Clock Divider This parameter is not saved in memory, and for now it will only divide the whole sequence. You can choose the division of the clock. Both internal or external clock will be divided by the selected setting. In an upcoming firmware update, the clock division for each track should be available. Preset Patterns You can choose one of out 16 preset rhythms. An homage to the old fixed pattern drum machines. You can load any of those patterns and store it into the memory with the parameters and CV control you need. Please use the reference chart to be sure to use the appropriate percussions with the corresponding outputs.
Song Mode. The Song Mode let you choose between any of the 16 combination of patterns. Note that the song preset identified with numbers are all consecutive stored patterns. And those identified with letters are non-consecutive. For now, the song mode and the loop mode are mutually exclusive. If you choose loop mode, song mode stops be executed. Remember that each pattern will load with all its saved features. And this is why it's really important to understand the lock modes available on the next page. Lock mode. You can choose one of six lock types in song mode, loop mode and when you insert a fill-in pattern. Otherwise you may load a pattern with undesired parameter, tempo or CV control. No lock will have no effect or will remove any lock type you had chosen. Lock time will lock the tempo parameter to each upcoming patterns. Lock CV will lock all CV parameters. Lock time and CV will lock both. Lock time, CV and shuffle will lock the shuffle or swing percentage along with tempo and CV. And lock all will lock all the parameters of the active sequence. Clear data. If you want to clear one or all patterns, use this feature wisely since there's no undo function. Clear S will clear the active sequence and clear all will clear all of them. Lux. The Lux page let you select the desired brightness of the matrix screen. If you want to please your tired eyes, you may drop the brightness a bit. Firmware. The last page will show the firmware of your DC1 drum computer. We revised every functions and features of your DC1 drum computer. The power of this sequencer relies in the combination of all this. Be creative, you can use your DC1 for drum sequencing, but you can also use it to trick some event in your patch or an audio rate like a pulse generator.